I think both those Danes are bigger than Jeff. Started off the week with a continuation of where we left off on the previous day. Last week, evening news. First neighborhood city park I've been to in Texas that reminds me of California. This neighborhood, end of a cul-de-sac, nice little park with a pond and a fountain. And the houses are that like 1960s, early 70s vintage of architecture with some variety. No HOA to mandate specific cookie cutter paint schemes and uh, still more variety and intrigue. And yet, you know, the horror story the HOAs tell you is if you don't have an HOA, houses are going to be poorly kept. And that's not the case here. It looks looks nice. I, I like this neighborhood. And also the other thing I like from that vintage of architecture is there are back alleys behind the houses. So all, the garages are all out back. So when you drive on these streets, you're looking at the nice front elevations of homes versus garage doors being the most dominant feature from the street. Fairly standard lighting setup for a live hit. Close up. It was overcast, but the sun was popping in and out. So I've got an umbrella positioned to flag the sun. With the cloud cover, I got a nice wrap around the shoulders to act as a backlight. Aperture 300D with a Fresnel lens for key. And then that newer panel was just standing by for a later hit when it gets a little darker to fill. For the first hit, just had enough ambient bounce that all we had running was the, the Aperture 300 to frame right. Natasha, News Nation has reached out to the Army National Guard asking why this helicopter was airborne in the first place after it had ordered all helicopter units to stand down. You note the people in the background walking through the city park. One of my frustrations with corporate video is the clients seem to want this like sterile environment. Never have anyone walk through the background or be working in the background. It just like it's such a head scratcher for me. It's like you have these interviews in isolation, like the subject's the only person that works there. So I'm constantly encouraging people to walk through. You know, generally you're featuring a business or services or collaboration. It's like all the talking points in the interviews run contrary to this sterile backdrop. Wrapping the Aperture 300 because our next hit will be when it's a bit darker and the 300 even at 1% at that distance is way too bright. Except I'm an hour off. This is our first evening with the new time change. You can see in the background the sun is just above the tree cover frame left. So wrap the umbrella and arming in a backlight. Good. Now uh, 180 the light. So the battery, the weight of the battery is closer to the stand. Good. And then obviously swing the arm and you want it centered behind the, the shelf. Here, I'll stand in there for you. I'm going to want to get it first. So you want to center it on my shoulders. A little bit more. Just a touch towards me. Cool. All right. Battery. And then you're going to set it to daylight and the lowest setting. And you can just turn this on and leave it on. It'll run all night at low. On. Yep. There's a switch on the back side. And then once you make sure that monitor has picture. All right. And at this moment, authorities are still investigating the cause of this helicopter crash. News Nation has learned of a planned funeral service this Thursday in the Rio Grande Valley City for the Border Patrol agent. This helicopter was part of a federal border security mission during that crash that did kill three people and injuring a fourth. At this moment, authorities are still investigating the cause of this helicopter crash. News Nation has learned of a planned funeral service for Border Patrol agent Chris Luna this Thursday in the Rio Grande City, Natasha.
2020 MacBook Pro. The battery was worn out and running hot, so I went to swap it out. I loaned out my heat gun, and I so I pried the batteries a little bit too much, and one of them kicked off on my kitchen table. I managed to carry the MacBook as it was a fireball to the front door, and it was just starting to burn my arm as I got the door open, and I chucked it onto the front lawn. Freezer trick works. All right, next I gotta get this ring off and I saw on YouTube, I gotta let it warm up now. Well, maybe keep it close. Um, I gotta put gaff tape on here as little tabs to twist this ring. I did have to use the rubber strap wrench to get my map box adapter ring off. The first attempt was at ambient and I was cranking on it and could not get it off. So that's why I froze the lens. And then I did use the strap wrench with the lens frozen and it broke loose. I just don't have video of that process. The filter holder shroud on this lens was damaged from the clip on map box getting bumped. There are three tabs that are held in place. They're just plastic tabs with these black machine screws. The other three screws are holding a retaining ring that retains the, the front element of the lens. So one screw head, it, the head pulled through the plastic and stripped it. The other one broke one of the tabs off. So you can see here, just the bottom right was the only one still holding the ring in place. I have not yet ordered the replacement part. It's $150, but I did reseat this ring with the, the broken parts. So at least it's flush and looks original now, and it appears durable enough to hold the factory lens shade, which is what I'm planning to use the next day up at South by Southwest. I think how I damaged this lens was up at South by Southwest, I had removed the lens from the camera and placed it in a small low pro soft backpack. And then the straps were really loose on my shoulders and I had my hands full. So I was like trying to remove the backpack by shaking my shoulder a little bit and it slid off my shoulder and probably fell from like just above my knees to the ground and i think because it was so tight in the backpack that's what damaged it so this is what the battery looked like at my kitchen table as i was prying it with a a plastic screwdriver So I had some of those sparks shooting onto my forearm as I was carrying the MacBook from the corner. Note how long this thing stays ablaze and even after the flames are gone, that's metal that's red hot. So my son burned up the, the last battery. I didn't want to leave a, a partially heated and damaged battery sitting around to spontaneously kick off. So he took the initiative and just torched it in the backyard. It's also terrifying to think that laptop batteries have done this in airplanes, in overhead bins, and I don't think there's any way to extinguish it. You just have to bag and contain the heat as the whole thing is a self-contained chemical reaction, which has motivated me to get rid of all of my standing old batteries sitting in the garage. I had all of my files backed up in the cloud except for working video files for the vlog. So the last couple of weeks entries, I had not yet moved those to external drives for backup. I have the 28 to 135 put back together with the broken ring, so it's all flush again, but I don't want to risk putting the map box on there again and having it pop out. So we want to revert to the original sun's shade. I don't remember where I put it, and this shelf here has been my catch-all of miscellaneous stuff I don't want to throw away. And the funds for my next camera went to this. Forecast had the next five days zero chance of rain. So the crew got going. Day one, they stripped the roof, and at about 4 a.m., with no roof on my house, it started raining, because that's the kind of luck I have. So day two and three, takes uh, I've learned longer to put metal on. These coils are one ton each, so they roll, they transport one on the trailer, one on the back of the truck, 
and my house was two and a half rolls. But what's cool is each piece is extruded and cut to length from the ridge cap down to the fascia. There are no horizontal seams. Back up to Austin, week two of South by Southwest, which is the big week. It's the EDU week, week one. Week two is the normal one. So we're just covering another presentation. So they've got several rooms set up at the Hilton and the convention center that are all the same layout. They're seating for, I don't know, maybe 150 to 300 people. And then they've got designated camera positions, one at the back and then one kind of halfway up to the side of the stage. The rear one's like too far away and the side position isn't close enough. So you'll see here as we get in position, ended up going in there with the 28 to 135 for the wide cam and the 200 to 600, which I purchased specifically for this type of work. And this is my first official day using it as the roving close-up camera. My son's getting the camera's time code synchronized because they don't allow cable runs from the house audio board to cameras. And they also don't allow wireless transmission because you don't want to step on all the other wireless mics and all the various conference rooms. So I have the sound devices mixer positioned up at the audio desk, time code synced to the two cameras and recording the PA mix. We ended up landing both cameras at the closer position and it was a panel of four people. The wide angle four shot ended up coming in at uh, full frame, 100 millimeter. And the close up cam was a tick under 400 millimeter to get a, a standard close up in 6K full frame on FX9s. And I know I'm old school, but I prefer, because it's what I started on, ground spreaders versus mid-level spreaders. And this is an example of why. The most common reason is I can nest two cameras in a box that's designated for one camera. This comes in frequently with press conferences. This allows me to change the vertical height of the camera once I'm in position without disrupting the operator that's next to me because the tripod legs stay in a fixed position. They don't float around or get wider or narrower. And in general, a ground spreader keeps the tripod thinned up more than mid-level. Now, I know you can sneak in the legs in and out with mid-level, but ground allows you to leave them locked in that fixed position no matter the height change of the lens. Then on uneven terrain or high wind or just a lot of foot traffic, it's easy to drop a sandbag on the ground spreader. This job had a lot of layers between me and the end client. So there's a little bit of telephone game delay. There was the end client production company, two agencies, and then me. And so through that filter, the original discussion was let's shoot 1080 upload that evening. So next day in New York City, the edit can be completed and published online. Then on the day, the on-site contact for the end client said, no, 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 let's shoot 4K UHD, at which point I said, you know, that may take a little over a day, let's say 30 hours to transfer it up to the cloud. So we switched to FedExing and the ship time on the FedEx ended up being a little over 30 hours. I need you on all my shoots because they're all short days when you come along. Uh -huh. You haven't put in a 12 or 17 hour yet. Have you even put in a 10 hour date? Mm, no. I got the last space in the outdoor lot near the convention center. This is my go-to parking area for the Hilton or convention center as both venues, the clearance is below my van. I can't get uh, eight foot to get it in there. So man, we lucked out getting the last space. There's a little bit too much gear in the van as I had three different jobs back to back with hotel stays in different cities, no chance to reset. And I wanted to leave the mattress in in case I got overtired on the road. I do prefer the body style on the high roof sprinter. It's the same length as my van. What is that, 144, 154? I forget. But too expensive. Let's see if Beck got distracted. Oh, no, he's still loading up the fridge. Good. We got still and sparkling for the next couple of days. When do we start recording? Uh, 
Morning. We're up in the Dallas Fort Worth area shooting two different distribution centers, interviews, B roll, still photos, aerial drone shots. Day one for me was 90% interviews. I really didn't have that much opportunity to get B roll, but we're going to be up there next week to focus exclusively on B roll at two locations. We had a compressed day, 11 start, finished at about 1700. Did not have an opportunity due to the company move to stop and get a quick lunch, but it worked out. We're only, uh, I guess, you know what? That was like six hour gap. Not too bad. We had a late breakfast and, and got through it. Had my son helping out, working uh, basically as the lighting tech on this one. We ran a F22 as the key light, newer panel as a backlight armed on a C stand, and then just ambient warehouse lighting for the fill side. I regret not bringing in a two by three solid to use as a topper to cut overhead warehouse lighting off our subjects. So I tried when possible to just reposition so we didn't have downlight like right in front of our subject making raccoon eyes. But there were a few interviews where it was a little harsh and we were such a long hike from the van with locked doors and moving so fast there was no opportunity to go back to the truck. Ran all the interviews with a single Sankin Lavalier, Electrosonics transmitter. We were on block 21. Didn't have any problems at either location. One frequency for the day. Didn't have a single RF hit, which was a huge relief. Next time, I think I'll go back to running a boom mic instead of a lav. This was just a speed thing. I was thinking I could work a lot faster with one less stand and just pin the lav on while the lights are getting positioned. But it was a noisy environment with conveyors, fork trucks, and just voices and activity and I know I can get better isolation with the boom. I made the conscious decision not to bring a top shelf for one of these carts and the shoot three of three on the road. It would have come in very useful to keep the gimbal built on the top shelf. I want to build new racks in the rear door area to hold Pelican cases and lights. I just, each time I start on a design, everything's like a trade-off. I, when I build more shelving instead of stacking cases, I can effectively carry less. There's our client. He volunteered to do the farmer carry so he didn't, so he didn't have a chance to go to the gym. After the first few interviews, I got confident enough to leave my son to monitor the role and listen to audio so I could wander around with the FX3 and get off a, a little bit of B-roll. First shoot day with the version two mount for the F22X light. Appreciate all the comments on my previous vlog regarding mods to get more than a 90 degree tilt. I was limited here. I had several subjects with glasses, so we had to elevate the light up, but then I was unable to tilt it down for optimum focus. So I have one commenter say that the little Matthews mini grip head will work when inverted backwards. So I'm gonna try that out this week. Thank you. Second location was a little bit under a million square feet of warehouse space. I think it was like 870, 860. I forget now, but uh, we switched from our rolling carts to a golf cart. So this shoot was all about featuring these distribution center operations and each subject was talking about a particular aspect of operations. So it's important to be able to discern the background as it's relevant to what they're speaking. You know, this is all kind of nuanced things. I didn't have a direct discussion with the agency or the clients about it, but uh, it weighed on my decision to just stay on the kit zoom. And quite often I wasn't shooting F4 wide open. I was down at a five, six or an eight which still gives me quite a bit of shallow depth of field, but at least there's still enough sharpness in the background to discern the objects that are back there. Got a shoot coming up next week. It's my first request of 2024 to shoot on Canon C-series cameras instead of the kit I own. I gently push back on the client. I just gave him a list of like, here's the cameras I own, Sony and Ari. Uh, I didn't offer a pricing option to subrent Canon gear. And they came back a day later and confirmed me to just shoot Sony. So, so far, missed days by not owning Canon kit. I'm uh, zero for one. We'll keep track this year and see how many missed days. Last year, I missed two projects that totaled about four shoot days not owning Canon gear. So, not really enough to uh, make the purchase. And honestly, I don't want to go through the inconvenience of having to go sub-rent gear and return it for a, a one-day shoot. Because the phone will probably ring and I'll get another offer to work on that same day. Anyway, that's it for this week. Thanks.